All right, then. Let's check this one out from Gamba AJ. Wuthering Waves. This is a problem. Four-star issue. Okay, before we get into it, I'm just going to say the game needs more four stars. I was speaking about this yesterday, and pretty much nearly every time we're talking about characters coming out in Wuthering Waves, and not only do we need more four stars in the game, we also need some proper support characters and some healing sustained characters as well, or at least somebody to compete with Arena. Um, I don't know if this is what he's going to be talking about in that regards, but I definitely think we need more four-star characters. So let's check out this video then. Go show Gamba some love. He makes some good videos. Let's see what he's got to say. Oh, YouTube, what is going on? Back at it with another what video. Up? And what in up? today's video, I have something different for you guys. Normally, I do not do reaction videos, but this is not a typical reaction video, guys, as I do... Are we reacting to somebody reacting to somebody? Okay, my favorite kind of video. <laughs> you guys to watch this full video as this video is called the four star situation is bad santontas and i want to give my insight on the whole okay. four star situation guys as i'm not sure if he's going to talk about the characters or if he's just going to talk about the weapons and i think right now okay okay that's a that's a potential point that might happen i'm leaning into more to the characters for me personally i think it needs to it, it could, not only just cuz we need more four stars it makes the five stars more special you know I just think it makes them a little bit more special. If we could get some cool four stars as well. And again, more support roles. Because I think at the minute, the game just seems to be leaning more into the DPS side of things heavily. You know, people like to say, and I know she was kind of advertised as this, that Chang Lee's a sub DPS. She's a straight up DPS, man. She, in my opinion, she's just straight up DPS. She requires too much field time. She's not a sub DPS. She's not really a support in any way. She's a straight up DPS. Now in Wuthering Waves, Kuro Games has a serious problem for free to play and light spenders. What do I mean by that? Well, Kuro Games rewarded us so heavily in the beginning of the year. A lot of us have spent it on the characters, uh, more so on the character banners, right? And we've collected multiple units. The thing is, if you're like me, and I'm a content creator, but it may be different for you guys, you guys have probably picked out certain characters and built them up. For yep. me, I build up all the characters. I like to test them and play with them. I don't refresh as often, guys. I'm not really a believer in refresh because I like to keep an authentic experience to you guys. But I have understood, guys, that even though you have multiple characters, the weapon choice... I don't know why people worry about that authentic experience for the viewers. This is if they can't relate. And I understand sometimes when people talk about, like, whale videos, you know, when people spend thousands of pounds to get everything. I get that. But I think people want to see that as well. But, yeah, I think at the end of the day, if you're making content on a game and you're spending a lot of time playing the game, it's not really relatable to a lot of people as well because they can't do that unless, they, you know, they're not in work or they're, they've just left school or they're in between jobs or whatever. But most of the time, people are limited to the time anyway. So it's kind of like, you know, um, I don't know why people feel the need to to make that statement. It's like I see a lot of content creators now, like, I'm going free to play on this one, guys. Going free to play. And it's fair enough. If you want to go free to play, and if it's for an experiment, fair enough. But when people try and make out that it's like kind of relatable to the view acts, kind of like... ...places in the game are not great. How many of you guys have watched any of my guides or pre-release guides or early analysis guides, right? Normally I do about two, maybe three sometimes, but genuinely, right, when I say, um, what's the best weapons? Other than their signature, and the standard like five star weapons right rarely do i ever mention four stars now with the newer units that have been releasing i have mentioned four star weapons that are alternative weapons right but most of the time when i think there is some all right four star weapons um uh, but I'm, I, I do agree there's not enough decent ones but i think there's some all right ones actually i mentioned a four star weapon it is the um what's the thing called the battle pass weapons you guys yeah and that's not very free to play friendly so i can understand for free to play even though you can use a four star and still get good damage it's significantly higher for a standard five star weapon from the standard banner or the signature weapon that being said kuro has given us a lot of pulls so i've given them leverage because in the beginning of the year i also did say <laughs> If you had your favorite characters and stuff like that, and you're good to go and you wanted limited characters instead of the standard units, I vouch for instead of pulling on the standard banner, pulling on the weapon banner. I agree with that as well. Uh, I didn't do that at the start myself. Um, and I do think, you know, if you've got what you want out of a banner or you're not interested in a character, hey, save for the next character if you want to. You know what I mean? Just to try and guarantee yourself if you're going to lose your 50-50 and you can want for your guarantee. 
but I do think it's worth to pull for some of the weapons. Um, you're guaranteed to get it as well. You know, you might get lucky and have to go deep into pity or even reach pity. Uh, I think they're quite generous in the system. I think it's got a decently generous system, uh, the game has. And I think as well, we're going to get more, like at the minute, we're still early on, aren't we? We are going to get a bigger pool of all this sort of stuff. Um, but I can't necessarily disagree with what he's saying fundamentally. Because the weapons are guaranteed and the weapons when it comes to tower adversity are universal. And you know what I mean? They're not like gated, like in Genshin, Honkai and stuff like that. When you're locked into the end game mode, right? Your uh, that weapon is locked on that character. In Wuthering, it's not locked on that character. You play one side of the tower, and if you're like, let's just say tomorrow, guys, like Jinsi and um, Gian, right? You use both those characters. Both are broad blade users, but you only have Gian's weapon. Let's say, right? Well, you can use Gian's weapon on Gian. But after you're done with that side, you can still use Jian's weapon on Jin C if you didn't pull for Jin C's weapon. The game's quite so generous. That's a benefit that I will say Kuro Games does have uh, is that you don't get locked. But let's watch this video, guys. Enough yapping. I want to give you guys constructive criticism and my honest thoughts about this whole situation. A guaranteed weapon banner, incredibly powerful effects, shareable equipment across endgame content. There's. Sorry to keep pausing. That's one thing that I was saying we need more of with weapon, ban and weapon, weapon banners sorry, and future weapons is more uh, general weapon usage, ones that are going to benefit more characters. I think that's how they can be a little bit more generous and still incentivize people to want to pull. You know, if there's a banner that somebody's not really interested in, but there's a weapon that is kind of designed for the character on the banner and it's probably going to benefit them more so but it's going to benefit a lot of other characters as well or at least a couple of potential characters have come prior i think that's a good way to kind of play the field on both sides um I, 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 personally i think that's the best way to go there's no doubt at all for any player familiar with other popular gacha games that wuthering waves has one of the most generous and player friendly weapon systems across the genre yep. unfortunately True. this generosity has come with a price five star weapons specifically the limited ones are some of the most valuable pieces of equipment in the game part of this is because of their fantastic base stats incredible critical boosts and powerful weapon effects the other part is because of how genuinely bad many of the four star weapons that's the problem these need to be a bit better and we need to get more of them and i'm hoping we will you know we're still early on i'm hoping that's something that's going to change i don't think the five stars need to necessarily change in and being nerfed at all because that would just you know that's not a good thing uh, i think they need to be usable on multiple characters and the four stars need to get better are while a player has the potential to pull and upgrade these weapons Okay, I don't want to already pause in the video, guys, but like I said, I agree with this statement, guys. A lot of people are sometimes, I'm not going to even say a lot of people because I think the general consensus understands, but even I said, but I get one or two comments, guys, right? From one or two people who always talk about why don't you go more in depth of the free to play like four stars? Guys, when you look at the free to play four stars that they give us, they're all terrible and i'm not even joking with you guys like i wish i could recommend you guys he's not wrong but at the same time i don't think they're all terrible they're just not very good uh, and weapons are incredibly important in this game they are trying to get people to push to buy the weapons which i understand the game is incredibly generous so i suppose if you want to play devil's advocate i guess it's fair for them to do so but i think for the benefit of the game in the long term Maybe just buff a couple of the ones that are already out and then maybe release a few others that, like, are decent um, in in upcoming patches and, and, and updates. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say they're all terrible. But, you know, I can't disagree, really, because they're not great, you know? Some more free-to-play four-stars, right? Majority of the time, they're trash. And they don't, like, the scaling, like, you see how that says double attack, right? I always see other ones where it's like, oh, yeah, energy regen and um, defense and other stuff. And I'm like, we don't need that. Like, why is there not more free crit rate options? Why is there not? I agree with that. For now, I do. Yeah, I do think there's a lot of equipment in this game. It's like I was saying it about when I was rolling echoes. Sorry for keep pausing. Uh, you've got echoes now that you've probably rolled and they're a trash. You know, they started off really good and then you get just terrible substats. 
I think, you know, potentially there's those echoes have the potential to be god rolls in the future, depending on characters that come. And a lot of these weapons might be really good with characters that come in the future. Of course, it doesn't help us now if they're not really catered to the characters that are in the game, which is a fair thing to say. They definitely should be a little bit more catered to the characters in the game. Um, and I wouldn't be against them getting a buff, definitely. They're not more free crit damage options. Where are those, like, four stars? I feel like one thing that Kuro Games does have to improve and ad address... Um, I mean, they don't have to necessarily address it, but I will say for at least my free to plays, I'll speak out for my free to plays right now. If you're free to play, let me rip. Don't speak out for them. They don't deserve it. Represent you then. Hopefully this video does good. Um, I do think Kuro should at least include one or two good four star options where we can get multiple copies. That way, like we don't have to pull for every other weapon you know what i mean yeah yeah but that's fair. again let me know how you guys feel down in the comments oh, that's fair, that is, that's let's fair. keep watching the video weapons at a much faster pace oftentimes their combination of main stat and weapon effects even at max rank pales in comparison to the other limited options there's no problem at all with more expensive weapons resulting in better performance yeah, but that he's finding that balance is isn't he yeah and it extends beyond performance in combat Today we'll be discussing the power level of 4-star weapons. Not just from a combat perspective, but from an account building one as well. 4-star weapons limit your options across your gameplay in more ways than you might think. Outside of dealing less damage, 4-star weapons also severely limit the viability of your echoes, your resource efficiency, and even team synergies. True. We'll be breaking I down agree. why this yeah. is the case, and why pulling for 5-star weapons can actually be one of the most efficient ways to optimize your account, even as a low spender or free to play. When it comes to 4 star weapons, outside of those in the battle pass, virtually every single one has a secondary main stat of attack percentage, defense percentage, or energy regeneration percentage. Yep. This effectively splits the weapons across three categories, offense, defense, and support. These defensive and supportive weapons are some of the best in the game, primarily due to the fact that they have no 5 star options. The concerto energy regeneration weapons in particular are some of the most powerful. The low base attack on these weapons and four star weapons in general, which can severe. And that's the one thing I will say, guys. I feel like the only four stars that are even viable are this, like, you see variation. I don't know what class again, but you know what I mean? It's like all the weapon class that Verena uses, the supportive type ones for four stars. I do think there are some options that are always going to be viable because support units are always easier to build up. And that's the one thing. I don't think it's just that as well. I think it's because a lot of the banners we've been getting in the game at DPS. The game, this is what I was saying about where we need more support uh, banners and more healer banners. But we definitely need a freaking healer because we need somebody to compete with Arena. But we need, we're getting so many, we're leaning heavily into the DPS side of things with the banners we've been getting that... The weapons that are coming uh, are, are DPS-based weapons, really. They're for a DPS character or a sub-DPS character. So, of course, the DPS weapons, four stars, are going to not be designed to try and compete with those weapons that are coming out now, you know, because they know that, right, we've got this character coming out and this signature, this character, this signature, this character, and they're all kind of on the DPS side of things. So they're not going to want the four-star DPS weapons that are going to be used for those characters to necessarily compete with them because they're going to want people to pull for the weapon and uh, obviously with the pull for the character or pull for the weapon. Whereas we don't really have that on the support and the defense side of things. So it leans into them probably just being better because they don't have to worry about competing with a five-star signature weapon from a banner. That'll probably change as we get more support and more healer-based characters. But I do agree... And I understand why Kuro are doing it. They're trying to lean people in in a soft way of nudging them towards going for the signature weapons. And it is a generous system. Um, and I do think that some of the four stars are viable, but they definitely are more viable on the support and the defense side of things. But I think that's why, as I said, because of the way the banners have gone in the game at the moment. The thing you guys, I would say looking forward, is that if you guys don't have a Verena, let's say, right, guys? And you're going to want to... Mango Verena, your shit's booked. Future sustained Joking. unit, which is a lot of people, it's actually. It's like, um, surprisingly, a lot of people either want a second sustain for their second team comp 
or they just don't have arena and they do want to sustain one of the big benefits i will say is with the weapon options for those characters for the defensive slash supportive types the four stars are at least good so when i do make yeah. guides on those or stuff like that at least you guys will have good options right there and it'll be more for you to play friendly but for deep like man my four star for arena is not even maxed out and uh healing's ridiculous ps's and sub dps's man it feels like a low blow not getting their weapon or at least having the standard five star again though no, i think it's because the way the impact have been set the personal the damage so of a character typically isn't a concern as these characters that use these weapons typically don't care about their damage or their damage scales with a different stat yeah. like defense for tao chi on the other hand for offensive weapons the entire opposite is the case with lowered base attack stats and a main stat that is typically attack these weapons at a baseline don't feel that great when compared True. to five star weapons the lowered base attack on the four stars even combined with their attack main stat has a huge impact every percentage stat boost in the game be it from your echoes or character abilities scales off this base attack oftentimes the attack main stat on these four star weapons just barely makes up for this difference in base attack and only once a character is at very high levels to allow the base attack of that character which is included in the percentage calculation to have a greater impact. Coupled with the fact that these 5 star weapons are bundled with a critical rate or critical damage secondary main stat, the end result. What did I say, guys? I'm not. I know I keep pausing in between, guys, just to get my input, but one of the things I was thinking about while he said the crit rate thing, guys, keep in mind who remembers you guys know the exact name I'm talking about. I don't know the name because I'm always bad with names, but the weapon on the battle pass, right? That you could use for uh yin lin right i know there's crit rate on that weapon i believe guys I can't remember but the name you, either. okay and i want you guys to understand something right you guys pay what ten dollars some of you pay twenty dollars for the battle pass right what i find so atrocious is like i think even the crit rate value for that four star is like i think it's significantly lower than what it could be like i would wish that the thing with me is with the five star weapons is when they do their little passives or like the bonuses that you get on the weapon besides you know the attack scaling or the crit rate crit damage you know what i'm talking about where it's like you get 12 percent bonus when you activate skill like that description of the weapon right i almost wish that the description of the weapon which on the four star isn't as good right which it isn't already right as the five star counterpart but at least the crit values and attack would be the same. That being said, I under I understand what you know category game we're in. We're in gotcha. But I almost feel like if you're paying ten to twenty dollars for a battle pass, you can at least do that. Result is that your four star weapons are. A f I, I guess I, I guess he's, he's kind of right there. But I think that's why the si the signature system in the game is super generous. Like because you've got a guarantee. I think you've got to look if because at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it's a gacha game. So if you're going free to play, you've got to be a little bit more calculated in, right, where do I focus my resources, right? You know, obviously, if you're going to spend a little bit of money or you're going to spend a lot of money, you're going to be able, you're going to, be a little, be able to play a little bit more fast and loose and be like, oh, I'm going to do both. I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and try, try and see how things go. But when you're free to play, you've got to focus things a little bit more, well, a lot more. And I think, you know, that's just going to come with you having to maybe like, right, okay, this banner, I need a weapon. I need a weapon. This weapon's going to suit characters that I've already got. It's going to suit the, the character in the banner better, of course. But let's let's focus on going for the weapon. And then, hey, if I get it, get it early, let's try and pull for the character, potentially. So I think the game is generous enough with the resources it gives you that you can do that. Um, of course, you're not going to be able to, again, play it as, as fast and loose as somebody who's putting money into the game. But, I, I, you know, at the end of the day, if you, it, we are in a gacha game. So you've got to understand that you're going to have... Sac have to make sacrifices in regards to the stuff you get in the game. And I do understand, at the same time, it shouldn't be too punishing for free-to-play uh, players because they make up a large portion of the game and they bring in other people who potentially are going to pay. But the, it's, it, it's about finding that balance. I think the balance is probably off a little bit at the moment. I think some of the four stars do need to get a little bit better, especially on the DPS side of things. But as I think, as maybe we start to get more characters, and um, because at the moment we are heavily leaning into DPS, sub-DPS characters, in the banners and i think that's why we're just not getting the good four stars for those characters or for the other dps characters in the game because 
they're trying to get people to purchase the stuff around DPS characters. And of course, they're not going to want loads of four stars to be really good. And you're like, well, I don't even need to buy that. Max up this four star and it's pretty much just as good. And I get that's not what these guys are asking for. But I think it's just about finding that balance. And I think that's something that might take a couple of patches and a few characters and different banners to come out before they get there, maybe. I don't think it's in a terrible position, but I do think a lot of these points are valid, though. Effectively missing a whole secondary main stat compared to five star weapons. When the second main stat is basically equivalent to the raw stats you get from a plus 25 untuned four cost echo, you are missing a lot of stats yeah. just from using a four star weapon. This isn't even counting the weapon effects. The lack of critical stats on every four star weapon outside of the battle pass is another huge issue, especially when it comes to resource management and echo building. When you're building and farming for a DPS character using a four star weapon, oftentimes the only viable forecast you can use is one with crit rate. Going with critical damage will make it impossible to have a reasonable true. critical ratio across your character. Similarly, yeah, to get that crit rate up... It's true. I think if you go in uh, on DPS characters at the minute in the game anyway, the way everyone's built is you want crit rate or crit damage anyway, but you are going to need to le learn lean more into crit rate. Uh, I do agree with that, but yeah, it's kind of what I'm looking for anyway, really. To crit rate or crit damage. around 65% for a character, you'll need to combine that crit rate main stat on your forecast with a crit rate roll on virtually every single piece. This makes your yeah. farming process incredibly painful when gearing your characters. Optimizing Bro. for only one or two... That is true, that is true. It does emphasize in the good substat rolls even more. That is a fair point. So it kind of like, it's a snowball effect. So it does, in that regard, I agree there. Um, so yeah, there's, there's no denying that does make it even worse. But again, it's finding that balance though. Two stats in particular means that you'll have less viable options when it comes to your echo main stats and a mandatory requirement for crit rate across your substats. If you're some- Dude, it's so crazy how it's easier to farm for Jin C and Chang Li because you can use either Emerald or Genesis because the damage drop off isn't that like- significant to her main Still don't weapon have that. it's literally they're about the same maybe like a seven percent difference i believe but gian man um dude the fact even gian's weapon as amazing as it is right do crit damage main stats are always like the the amount of crit rate you need right and i get the average person who's watching this video right now or just playing the game probably averages around like what do you guys average? You would say like 60% crit rate, right? And on a good uh, side of things, about yeah. 50 yeah. something to 60. I'd feel like the casual or average player doesn't have as much time to like go out into the world. I mean, you can do the tacit fields, but I've talked about like the tacit fields, guys. I don't. And damn, for a while I was sitting on like about 13% crit rate on Gian. It was terrible. I don't even know where I'm at actually on that. He might not even be at 60 at the moment. I think the ratio that they give you for the echoes is good for the amount of stamina you spent i get it's the equivalent to like other things i kind of wish that's like one thing they would look at in the future is like hey you reach this higher level let's give you double the amount of echoes right or if you're not going to give us double the amount of echoes i do think and i think a lot of people who have made it this far will agree with me in the video we need more Echo EXP materials. Yeah, agree with that. There's no, that, that is the biggest uh, bottleneck in the game at the minute by far. We all thought it was going to be tuners. It is Echo experience materials. And when you're at level union level 50 and above, you should be exponentially getting more. I'm not talking ridiculous numbers, but the increases are ridiculously small. Um, and that is where you're at the bottleneck now because... Especially, and then this is not even taking into account where you're free to play or premium. If you're just getting trash substat rerolls, rolls, sorry, you, you, you burn through those, through those mats so freaking fast. I think I'm still sitting at above 1,000, 1,200, 1,300 tuners. And there's people out there who've got like 4K. And I, I didn't really do much rolling before 1.1. I kind of waited because I wanted to see what was going to happen with the whole ecosystem because there were talks of a lot of changes. So... I've, I've kind of artificially got a little bit more. I'm artificially pumped up because I did a lot of that. But it's just the mats, man. The mats, it's like, dude, it's rough. And then when you're trying to level characters as well, it's like even as somebody who I buy the podcast, I've put about 70 quid into the game minus the podcast and the asteroid pass as well. So I'm not free to play. I'm no whale by any means. You know, I'm a paid player though. And I'm still at that point where I'm like, dude, 
I'm just struggling for mats, and it's uh, it, it's it's a bit rough, and and that's even me using uh, you know, solvents here and there to go do a bit of farming. So I definitely agree with that big time that needs to change, in my opinion. Because both of those is like it's a pain, man. And I understand like this is all RNG. There are times like for me building Jinxi or Chang Li, it was really easy, wasn't that hard, right? But don't worry, I know some of you are thinking right now, oh, it was hard for me to build a certain character. Do I not have that problem? No, guys, my problem was with Jian, man. I farmed the three cost, uh, either it's the car or the Hu Chief, um, the even the bird, right, guys? I can't even get arrow dam um arrow damage uh element. You know what I mean? Yeah, to even drop out of that. Actually, then the fact that that's already difficult, and those three, I swear the wind creatures are the hardest. Like, dude, the, the freaking Geo too long to get healing bonus. Oh my god, with how long that thing takes to spawn and die when he doesn't drop an echo as well. Oh, pain. Wind echoes are the hardest and most annoying to farm, especially the Who Chiefs because they waste so much time, man, throwing that circle field. Oh, it's yeah, like, so why? Why? Just let me just quickly nuke you and get on with my day but just um, die yeah man and for you not to get arrow damage after that for you not to get it from the tacit field and then for you to roll and then for you to miss on all of them i will say that is a demoralizing feeling if we had more like echo exps and let's say we were getting multiple right and we just miss 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 but we can keep re-rolling re into it i think we'd be fine the other thing i think that kuro should update in this game and this is just a pro tip they should allow us to dismantle the gold echoes that we are never going to use and get XP in return out of it. Or that's that's a fair point. I probably wouldn't do it too much. Uh, well, it depends if they've rolled. I've rolled them once or twice because, like I say, I still think there's going to be potential characters coming that are going to make those, but then you can always reroll. That's a good idea, actually, that is. I think that's a fair idea because then the choice is there if you want it or not. But yeah, that's definitely a good choice. Or just even use the zero cost, idea, um, I the ones we're never going to upgrade, and just put them all into uh, another echo. And no, before someone comments, I'm not talking about, oh, you, I know someone's going to say, isn't that in the game you level it up? I'm talking about not leveling it up. I'm talking yeah. about it just sits there, the ones you're never going to use. You can dump them into yeah. uh, the echo you want to upgrade, and boom, EXP materials right there. But even one, even so, ones that are potentially leveled up, I get it, you, you're kind of wasting because they've already been putting, but you can at least get a little bit back, you know, kind of like a bit of a tax rebate or something, you're getting 50% back or 30% back, it's a little bit back, isn't it, and it feel, doesn't feel like it's totally white, on a dead echo I'm talking about, you know, one that you've, it's because there's been a lot of people who did this at the start of the game, which I always say not to. Do up to 5 to 10, get your reroll, see what happens, and then decide whether you carry on going. But people were doing a lot of it at the start, where they're just maxing echoes out and then rerolling them and just getting absolutely dead echoes. You know, it would be useful to do that as well. Just being able to dis dismantle them full stop and get um, experience back would be a really good idea, actually. Someone who's been rolling to optimize echoes, you'll understand that this will dramatically increase the time that it takes for you to get a working equipment set for a character. This means more tuners, more echo experience, and more farming to get your character in a usable state. This also means more frustration, bad rolls, and tuners evaporating into thin air. In a lot of ways, saving your resources by working with cheaper equipment can result in more expenses later down the road. It's eerily true, yeah. similar to real life. Pulling that 5-star weapon is a big upfront expenditure, but it saves you a lot in the long run, especially if you're looking to get your stats to a certain level to challenge endgame content. Plus, you're guaranteed to get this power and efficiency. Building yep. and upgrading 4-cost weapons also comes with another devastating downside sunk costs. Early on in the game during Yinlin's release, I made a terrible mistake. With Jinzo Keeper, a respectable 4-star stat stick on her banner, I made the hasty decision to save some resources and build her around that 4-star weapon instead of her signature, Stringmaster. Then I Yeah, I do regret not pulling for the uh, signature for Yinlin. I, uh, that's a mistake that I learned and then since, I've made sure I got a... Uh, uh, well, I got Jian's. Or I've made sure I've got Jinsies. And um, I haven't gone for Changli's yet. Um, but I am. I am going to pull for it. I've been I've been chipping away at it slowly now. I've started to. Every time I get a little bit, I'm, I'm going into it. But I'm very early in. But yeah, uh, that was a mistake I made. And I've learned from it. I remember I had Encore wait. on my account as well. Wait a minute. 
Is he free to play? If he's free to play, right? Then I understand what he's talking about. If this man's not free to play and he's a light spender, right? Surely he knew there was a battle pass weapon, right? That would have got him crit rate. Surely, right? Well, and realized that by pulling String Master, I could upgrade two extremely powerful characters at once. I pulled Yinlin's weapon. It's right. great. Yep. I also have a level 60 or 70 Jinzo Keeper in my inventory. Because of the ability to share no, weapons and end game content, I will likely never need to use Jinzo Keeper ever again. I will never get those hundreds of thousands of credits, weapon experience, and skill upgrade materials back. In short, 4-star weapons are even worse to level up because of the ability to share weapons in endgame content. As you progress yeah, through the game and the build up thing. your roster, pulling for one limited 5-star weapon can potentially gear 2, 3, or even 4 characters Literally at once, what I said. and almost all of the time Literally. this will be an upgrade. As the game's roster only grows with each new release, the That's why I think the biggest buff, buff will come for the 4-stars, you know, allowing them to be using multiple characters. But again, it's that balance. They've got to encourage people to want to pull for those, haven't they? At the end of the day, the game's free to play. They've got to try and get people to spend. That's the end goal for them. And they are being incredibly generous. And it is a generous system in the game anyway. So, you know, it's, it's like I say, it's about finding that balance. Oh, but yeah, I, I, I think there needs to be some small changes. The value of your existing five-star weapons can only increase. My mm -hmm. advice to every player is to simply build up that arsenal. Pull a limited five-star weapon for every weapon class. Sure, you might not have the most synergistic weapon effect and character kit combination. Okay, he's saying pull a limited five-star weapon of every class, right? Let's be real though, right? What he's saying is a little bit unrealistic, especially if you're free to play or light spender. Because number one, what he's talking about, okay, let's go over this. How many of us want five-star characters in the game right now, right? A lot of us wanted Gion, right? And if you didn't want Gion, you wanted Yid Lane. And let's be real, I know majority of the community, there is a small percent no doubt people want Camilla. I'm hoping one day we get a Guess You Lin announcement, right, guys? But the issue is, number one, getting the character is mostly primary for almost every... Again, though, this is where I say the sacrifices have to be made if you're going to remain free to play, um, which I am not... I'm not knocking people play, playing free to play at all. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. Um, you know, I play other gacha games free to play. Uh, this is the only one I've really spent a little bit on. I spent a little bit on Hong Kong Star Rail and Genshin now, but that was chat um, uh, with uh, Genshin telling me to pull for characters. And with Hong Kong, I bought the um, the pass a couple of times, like twice, I think. So, you know, the way I see it, I, I think that's just fair dues for playing a game for a few hours. I got like 100 hours out of Star Rail, even more. A 10 is nothing, really, in that regards. Um, but I think if you are going to actively be right, right, I'm staying free to play, which is totally fair. You've got to understand that, right, I've got to focus my mats and my energy and my pulls in a particular way. I either want to get all the characters or try to get all the characters. And I'm going to get a big wide pool that's not very deep. Or I'm going to be like, right, I'm going to skip this character. I would like this character, but I want to get my characters to be a little bit more sustainable and a little bit more um, capable of de dealing with endgame content. Then I think that's just a choice you've got to make. I don't think we can expect... Kuro to be like, right, we're going to make it so you never have to spend a penny on the game. You can get pretty much everybody and you're going to be able to get all the weapons as well. And I'm not saying this is what Gamba's saying. I'm just saying that, like, you know, I think that, that we can't really expect Kuro to do that. And we've got to understand that this is a ga gacha game at the end of the day. It's free to play. And this is how they're going to make their money. Um, unless they start bringing skins into the game and people just want to buy skins, which then that's fair. Or, yeah, I think, you know, there's there's got to be some sort of in-between there, really. Um, and I just think making the four-star weapons a little bit better would probably benefit more people um, if they want to stay free to play. But at the end of the day, it's not on Kuro, I guess, to encourage people to stay free to play. Is it they want to get you to be a light spender, really? Everybody. And I mean that everybody wants to play with a new character, okay, that they're interested in. That takes a lot of Astrite. Even though you can get a character at 70, right? That is a lot of Astrite you're burning. Or 22, you know, just saying, just saying, get good, Chang Lee, 22 pulls, just saying. Through. So you would have to pull it early. 
But here's the other issue on top of that, right? I don't know if y'all's gotcha luck is better than mine. My gotcha luck in Honkai Star Rail is amazing. My gotcha luck in Wuthering Waves, guys, has been terrible. I have... It's been kind of here and there. I've lost a few 50-50s, to be fair. I lost Jin C. I lost, um... Did I use Yin Lin? I can't remember now. I think I got Yin Lin. I got Zhang Li. I... I can't remember if I lost uh, Jian as well. It's kind of been here and there with this. It's been pretty good, though. But my look in Genshin and in uh, Star Rail is trash. Uh, I'm not even going to go into the fails and the lost 50-50s there, but it was trash. But, uh, yeah, it's probably definitely been better in this game. But I think at the mini, I think inevitably it's probably going to be a little bit better because you've got a smaller pool to pull from. Lost every single 50-50. Dude, I have an R2 um, Jan Shin. I have an R... What is it? R2 Verena. Okay? I didn't even... Have, it, it's so crazy to me because I lose the 50-50. I want to put this into a free-to-play or light spender's perspective imagine spending all that asteroid not even getting the character losing the 50 50 how are you supposed to go for the weapon now if he means over time sure but it's going to get hard guys because the characters are making are really good and then they synergize with another unit currently like that's where we just gotta you know that's what the fomo is that's what the fomo is it's the nature of the beast i guess like i said jg is around the corner guys we don't know if she's gonna be first or second right now as far as the banner is concerned right and then there's gonna be a weapon he's like what do i do you know it's uh, like i say again if you're gonna be free to play it's just that that's the sort of sacrifices are gonna need to be made gonna be need to be made if you're a light spender unless you're an absolute whale at the end of the day that's just gonna gonna be how it is you know some people might want to try and go for copies of a light spender you know gonna be like a lot less likely to get that to happen than maybe just getting uh um the 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 banner and then getting the weapon because um, you've got the guarantee. But still, you know, um, I just think it's the nature of these games, isn't it? You know, you, you've just got to accept that you are not going to get everything in the game. And you're not going to be able to. And even if you spend a decent amount of money, you're still probably not going to be able to. And it's just you've got to accept it and understand that you're going to have to play the game differently and probably potentially put more time into farming other things within the game to maybe lift up the areas that your character's weak in, I guess. But even her... She is going to be able to buff Chang Li, Jin Si, uh, Lin Yang, and we'll see her multipliers and what they do with the character, right? Um, and how strong she's going to be and what they change before release day of her kit. Because who knows what they make her stronger, change some wording, and then she synergizes with more units. Then we're all going to be looking like, oh, well... We'd be dumb not to pull that unit. Now, of course, you're not interested in her design or animations. You can easily skip. But I feel like he's underestimating the value is that most people, male or female, are waifu and husbando collectors first. He's underestimating the FOMO, maybe, right? That's what it is. At the end of the day, that's what it is. It's FOMO. It really isn't anything about the characters, which it is. But it's about the FOMO, it's about your inability to be like, well, I've got to get that one. And then being like, well, I couldn't get this thing, but I had to get this thing because, you know, I had to. Um, and what do you have to do? You have to win the 50-50 first, okay? So I think if he means long term, sure. But I also think it's very unrealistic for a light spender or free to play to try to build up that arsenal as quickly as he may be talking about. Like oh, yeah, Jin C, who quick. does resonance skill damage working with Jian's weapon that grants heavy attack damage, but her performance on a limited 5 star weapon will be much better than any of the 4 stars. This True. also makes the character building process, specifically for DPS characters, far more manageable in the long run. Viewing these weapon pulls as an investment in your account rather than an expenditure is a perspective that makes a lot of sense, especially when every single weapon is guaranteed. Yep. At the end of the day, Kuro has to make money. I have no doubt in my mind that the game's systems of a guaranteed weapon matter, weapon sharing, 
and the poor performance of many four-star weapons are designed to persuade players to pull on those limited weapons. 100% I agree with but that. But in a lot of ways, Kuro is using the carrot instead of the stick to motivate us. They're providing more benefits to pulling these weapons instead of drawbacks. It would have been easy to lock Echo and weapons to a character once they're used in the tower, but they didn't. Hopefully this overview was helpful in highlighting just how effective a 5-star limited weapon is, even if its stat bonuses don't perfectly line up with a character. The upside of pulling these weapons is huge, and in my opinion, can do more for your account and its progression than you might think. Peace out. I think I agree with a lot of what he said there. I, I, I think I, I'd lean into agreeing with him more in the sense that even if you maybe, you're going to have to be like, right, I can't pull this character out. I'm going for the weapon. I'm going to go for the weapon, and then I'm potentially going to go for the next weapon. In the next banner, we get another DPS. I want to get that weapon. You have a look at the stats, the, the all that sort of stuff, how, how the weapon's going to benefit characters, and then be like, right, this is potentially going to benefit A, B, C. This one's going to benefit A, B, C, D. Right, okay, I've got a weapon now that's capable of being used across multiple characters on the game. Now, I've got these two weapons. I can maybe start to pull on some of the uh, future banners in the characters. And then, you know, you pull a couple of characters. Right, let's try and go for some weapons again now. Because with the weapon, you got the guarantee. So, I think that's a sensible idea for somebody who's free to play. At the end of the day, you've just got to accept, unless you get insanely good luck, you're going to miss out on some stuff. That's just how it is, and that's how it kind of has to be for the business model to work. And I think the, the game is, gem is really generous. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think it's a massive problem. I've got more of an issue in the four-star regard of there not being enough four-star characters, in my opinion. I think there is some decent four-star weapons out there. Of course, they're a mile off the five stars, but that's how it's designed to be. At the end of the day, I think the only way we will get weapons that aren't light years above the four stars is if they remove the guarantee. And I don't think we want that, do we? we I don't want that anyway. Um, I think maybe we just buff a couple of the DPS four stars and maybe they potentially do that when we get a couple of banners that aren't so DPS orientated. We get like, you know, when we get the next sustained banner potentially, or we get a proper support banner, they're like, okay, let's in the background, let's buff a couple of these four stars now because we're not selling a DPS character and a DPS signature weapon. So we don't necessarily have to worry about the competition right now. Um, I think that's potentially something that'll happen. Yeah, great video, guys. Go check out Saint Tanatos. I apologize if I butchered his name. Uh, incorrectly guys i wanted to say one thing though i agree with 90 percent of his points made in this video but um one issue that i would say that he's not mentioning while he is mentioning all the benefits of pulling the weapon how kuro doesn't lock you which is better than any other gacha game right now out on the market and their system the unfortunate reality is and you guys correct me if i'm wrong i believe 50 percent of the community is free to play I believe that 20%, maybe even 25%, right? Uh, which would equal 75% uh, now because we're adding that 25 is light spenders. And I believe the other 25%, which would complete making it 100%, are the whales. You know what I mean? I'd probably say it's even less than 25%. Typically, I think it's usually, isn't it like, uh, I'm just pulling these numbers out of my ass, but I'm sure I've heard this through the grapevine. It's usually around about 60% to free, you know? Another 30 odd percent, uh, uh, light to medium spenders, and then it's like in a couple of percent that are real whales, but that couple of percent, percent spend enough that kind of covers the rest of it. Um, so yeah, that, if that's the normal, that's in oh, that's incredibly generous, and, and uh, you know, Kuro should be starting to do really well then, if that's the case. So well, 50% of the community, I say, could access, like, the light spenders can access some weapons, you know what I mean, uh, quicker than free-to-play, obviously. Uh, whales are going to get everything, so their units are going to be powerful. It's just going to take time to build them up. I do feel like free-to-play is being left behind a little bit in the dust. So the only way I feel like they can compensate it is to make the character so powerful, even without the weapon. But even with... JG and I think if they do that though it makes what's the point in pulling for the weapon then really you know there's going to be no desire to need to pull for the weapon of course you're going to be able to buff your character a little bit but even if you're a spender what's the point in spending more to get a weapon when you can be like right I'm just going to wait for the next character you know or just pull again on the character to get a copy of the character um I don't think they need to do that I think all the best thing they could do is just buff a couple of the four star weapons personally Zhang I think that'll Liao fix the problem 
it feels like they need their weapons, right? Especially Zhang Liao, because we don't have a good alternative option really for him. But um, good video. Like I said, guys, let me know what you guys think of this video. Um, it's a little bit different. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed my uh, reaction and insight addressing this. Shout out to Santos, great video, man. Please yeah, leave a, a like, comment, and subscribe, guys. If you guys want me doing more content like this, informative and reacting, please let me know what videos you guys want me to see. I always recommend dropping suggestions down below if you guys want my input and take on something. That's it for this video, guys, and I'll talk to y'all next time. Peace. Yeah, that, yes. that was a good video. That was. I uh, I, I don't like disagree with many things that Gamba said. I just think that um, I do think you know, and I, I'm not saying that he's not saying these. But Kuro have got to make money. At end of the day, free to play players are always going to probably get second class citizen treatment, so to speak. But I think the game is incredibly generous. It is generous, more generous than majority of gacha games out there. The weapons uh, banner system is super generous, and I do I do agree. With uh, what uh, Saint Tonas Saint Tontas uh, said uh, in regards to the five star uh, banners actually being really useful, you've just got to take into account that it was a free to play player and even as a light spender, there's going to be banners where you're going to be like, right, okay, this character looks really cool, but the weapon's going to benefit my account overall more. It's going to benefit a bunch of my other characters. This weapon, this character is going to benefit maybe a couple of team synergies. And he's going to bring something to the, to the team that I potentially don't have. But the weapon's going to benefit me more. And at the mini, because we keep getting so many freaking DPS slash sub DPS, I don't think we need to worry about those as characters. You probably want the weapons more. Um, and I don't think in the last couple of banners, you would have been wrong in going for the weapons personally. Um, even though Jinsi's fucking sick. Um, I think it would have been fine to really skip Chang Li this time and go for a weapon potentially. Um, even though, you know, obviously the waifu meta, you got to pull for her. But uh, I think at the end of the day, you just got to make those decisions and not get caught up by the FOMO and just try and focus your efforts in a particular way that's going to benefit your account overall. If you're trying to min-max anyway, if you're just enjoying the game, fuck it, pull whatever you want. I think people get a little bit too wrapped up in that sometimes because they've got to hit the end game content as efficiently as possible. And I think at the end of the day, if you're free to play, if your idea of... Uh, getting what you want out of a gacha game is the end game content and, and clearing as efficiently as possible and be maxing everything. You ain't going to do it as a free to play player. That's just a fact. You might be better and build a better account to be able to make your character stronger because you you understand the game a little bit better and you can, you, 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 your, your synergy is better and your, your roles are better, but you just ain't going to ever be as, 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 efficient as what you could be if you're spending in the game that's just a fact but uh yeah good video from both i'm gonna have to drop a sub to saint tontas that was a really good video and he made some excellent points that were well informed as well and, uh yeah I, I think i agree with majority of what he said there and another good video from gamba there we go reaction to a reaction to somebody else's contents um because we are creatively devoid here